I got saved as a 16-year-old at church camp back in July 2005, and I came home from church camp, and I decided I was going to read the New Testament for the very first time in my life. I read through the New Testament once, and then I went back through and read through the Old Testament. So I read through the Bible for the first time in my life on my own as a high schooler. And after I read it for the first time, I thought I was a Bible scholar. <laughs> and maybe some of you are in those shoes, same shoes today. But the longer I have studied the Bible, which has honestly not been too long, about 12 years really, the more I study this book right here, the more I realize how little I know. And as I begin to study in the New Testament and the Old Testament, I'm reminded of many characters in the Bible. You know, as I go to the Old Testament, maybe, maybe you're reminded of the same ones. When I think of the Old Testament, I think of Adam and Noah and Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, and Elijah. When I think of the New Testament, of course, I think of Jesus, and I think of Paul and Peter, James, and John. But did you know that throughout the book of Genesis, all the way to the book of Revelation, there are over 3,200 characters mentioned by name in the entire Word of God. One of the greatest ways that you could develop a better understanding of God's Word is studying the individual Bible characters. Yes, I believe in meditating in God's Word every single day, but that doesn't mean you need to get on a Bible reading plan and, and read a certain amount of chapters each day. But I submit to you that what you could also do is study the Bible a little bit deeper than just reading in the, the words on the page and, and pick out characters and study every passage that that character is mentioned in. We find an individual in our text today that's mentioned that you probably, more than likely, never heard of before. Tychicus. He's not mentioned much in the Bible, but he's mentioned in the Bible. <laughs> you and I are not mentioned in the Bible, so we find that he is. He lived in the days of the Apostle Paul, and today I just want to preach a message about Tychicus. I wrote down these words, and by the way, if we could find his cemetery and find his epitaph, I believe that... This is what it would say. Tychicus, a brother, soldier, and comforter of God. And those words I'd like to label as my sermon title today. Tychicus, a brother, soldier, and comforter of God. Today I just want to share with you three attributes as we look at his life and his, the characteristics. I believe that in these two verses, and I'm going to share with you the other passages of the New Testament that this man is mentioned in, and we are going to draw throughout all this three characteristics or three attributes about taking his life. And the three attributes are found in the title. I wrote down taking his number one was a beloved brother. And we find that in verse number 7. And in verse number 8, we find two other characteristics. Tychicus was a sent soldier, and then also Tychicus was a called comforter. Will you come with me as we journey through these two verses of the Bible? But before we do, we need to keep in mind that the Apostle Paul is writing this book of the Bible, these four little chapters, to a city called Colossae. These believers have been living there for quite some time. Paul never visited this place throughout his three missionary journeys. He never went and started this church, but we believe that later uh, in verse number 12, the man mentioned in verse 12 is perhaps one of the ones that started this church and is pastoring the church. But we find that, that in the midst of these words of divine inspiration, the Apostle Paul's writing, and he's writing the importance of making Christ supreme in our lives. And if you've never made Christ number one in your life, you need to do so. Maybe you're here today and you're lost and you're not on your way to heaven. Well, the first step is making him your Lord and Savior and, and believing that Jesus died on the cross for your sins and he was buried and rose again. The Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, you know what it says? It says, thou shalt be saved. That's a divine declaration straight from the mouth of God in heaven. And I submit to you today that's worth banking on. And if you never made him your Lord and Savior, you need to do so. By the way, you have two choices at the table. If you're listening to this sermon today, here or online, you can either make him Lord and Savior now in this life and spend the rest of your days living for him or you will stand at his judgment and, and bow your knee and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord prior to him casting you to a horrible place the Bible describes as the lake of fire. And so I submit to you, you need to do so before it's eternally too late. Make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior. Believe on his name for salvation and alone. No works, no, nothing that you can do to obtain salvation except for believing on the name of Jesus Christ. And so Paul's writing about the preeminence of Christ in our lives, making him number one. Jesus said, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the necessity of life 
will be added unto us. We find that also he's combating doctrinal heresy. So in the day of Asia Minor, that, that is, if you were to look at, at, at the map in the Middle East and you see the Mediterranean Sea and you see the land of Israel right here, Asia Minor is up here in modern-day Turkey. And this church was located in a city called Colossae that is in that area, that region. And so he's writing them, and there are these crazy doctrinal heretics that would come in and they would teach things that were opposing to the Old Testament and to the Word of God. And so Paul was writing, combating these things. And then we find that, that the end point of this this passage of scripture, this entire book of the Bible, was to relay to the Colossians the state of affairs that Paul was in. This book of the Bible was written by the direct hand of Paul. And we believe that a few others might have helped him out with that. According to earlier in, in verse number one, Paul and Timothy, Timothy, and then maybe a few others might have helped write some of it, and, and we'll, we'll talk about that a little later about Tychicus' role in this letter. But we find as they were writing, they were writing by divine inspiration of God, and, and he, Paul, wrote this book, not in a nice palace, not in a nice home, or a nice condo, or a nice apartment complex, but he was actually writing this book of the Bible in a dungeon, or, or, or a jail, or a prison, or underneath some sort of house arrest. He was in bonds, he was in chains, as the Bible speaks of throughout this book of the Bible. And with that in mind, I just want to share with you that, that he begins to write this book in chapter 4, where we discussed earlier how, 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 how about we need to continue in prayer, we need to persevere in prayer, we need to redeem the time. And then as he pauses, he kind of, verse number 7, he kind of wraps up his entire letter by mentioning nine individuals. And we're going to study these nine individuals for the next several Sundays, but the first one today is Tychicus, a brother, soldier, and comforter of God. Let's look at verse 7. Verse 7, it says, All my state, that is, everything that's going on in his life. You know, the Apostle Paul went on three missionary journeys. He went out and he devoted his life after he became a child of God and earlier in the book of Acts. We find that, that he devoted everything he had to going out and sharing the good news of Jesus Christ, his death, burial, resurrection, and then planting churches and edifying the believers in the churches and the discipling those. And he's talking about his affairs, his state, how he's doing. And he's relaying through Tychicus about how he's in jail and how he is suffering, going through hardship as a child of God. He says, all my state shall Tychicus. Would you say Tychicus with me on three? One, two, three. Tychicus. Say it again, please. Tychicus. I know it's a, an interesting word today, and, and more than likely you'll never name your child that name. And God bless you if you do. It's, a, it's an interesting name. You know, it's funny how uh, sometimes names mean different things, but Tychicus, his name, uh, literally means fortunate. And I, I begin to think how we're all fortunate. We're all blessed of God. Tychicus was fortunate that he was placed in the New Testament canon. He was fortunate enough that he got to serve alongside of Paul in Paul's third missionary journey as Acts chapter 20 displays. He was fortunate enough that he, he, his name is in the Lamb's book of life. And he was used of God in a great way. And we are fortunate as well how we can be used. We may not have our names in the New Testament, but God can surely use our names to accomplish his sovereign plan in the universe. Uh, I like what the uh, Holman Bible Dictionary just says briefly about Tychicus. It says, personal name meaning fortunate. One of Paul's fellow workers in the ministry, a native of Asia Minor, according to Acts chapter 20, verse 4, he traveled with the apostle. Paul, on the third missionary journey. Tychicus and Onesimus, who's also mentioned in verse number 9 here, carried the Colossian letter from Paul, as we see in these few verses here, and were to relate to the church Paul's condition. Paul also sent Tychicus to Ephesus on one occasion, according to 2 Timothy chapter 4, and he also possibly went to Crete, according to Titus chapter 3, verse 12. It's interesting, as we look at Tychicus' life, not much is said about him, but what is said leaves an eternal impact upon not just those who lived in his day, but upon our days today. I like what tradition tells us of his life. Tradition, which is oral tradition, which we believe to have great credibility, holds that Tychicus died as a martyr of the Christian faith. Now, with that in mind, I want to I zoom in on a few different words in our passage today, but look at the word brother in verse 7. 
Would you say, brother, with me on three? One, two, three. Brother. He says, all my state shall take against declare unto you. He is a beloved brother and a faithful minister and fellow servant of the Lord. I wrote down, first of all, Tychicus was a beloved brother. Tychicus was a beloved brother. There was a day in his life, we don't know when, but we know that in Acts chapter 20, the Apostle Paul made contact with him on his third missionary journey. This was his last missionary journey prior to, to the, the end of the guards coming and capturing him and, and putting him in jail and then ultimately would lead to his death later on as we discuss and read in church history. But we find that, that Tychicus made contact with Paul. I, we don't know if Paul led Tychicus to the Lord or somebody else led him to the Lord, but we know that he was a brother who's mentioned here in this verse. Verse 7, there was a day in his life where he believed on Jesus as his, for his salvation, that he made Christ his Lord and Savior, that he put his faith and trust in him and in, in the atoning uh, sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross. And now he is, according to his testimony, the testimony of God's word, he is with Christ Jesus in glory as we speak. In which we can have the same assurance today. He was a beloved brother. Not just a brother in the Lord, but a beloved brother. One who was loved not just by Paul, but by God Almighty. And if you're a child of the living God, I declare to you that God loves you. <laughs> if you are a part of His creation, if you've been made in the image of God, which is everybody in this world, He loves you. And He wants to spend eternity with you. As I read verse number 7, I want to zoom in on the word declare. I've read on this. He was a beloved brother because he declared a message. He was a beloved brother because he declared a message. You see, the purpose of Paul talking to Tychicus and also Onesimus, which we'll talk about him perhaps next week, Lord willing. But Paul wrote by the divine inspiration of the Holy Spirit of God with most likely the help of Timothy and, and maybe others. Tychicus was a man who declared a simple message to a body of believers. He went and talked about what all was going on in Paul's life and how God was using Paul in his current condition. As I think about that message that he was asked to relay, I think about the message that we have been asked to relay as believers today. Sure, it's not your responsibility to go into another a city and to tell them how my condition is or, or I'm not called to go and tell other people about your condition. What we are called to do is to go and tell others about Jesus Christ's condition. How he went and he suffered and bled and died and he now he is at the right hand of God the Father and he is making intercession for you and for me and he is our God, our King, our Lord and our blessed redeeming Savior. And that's the message we are to declare every single day of our lives. Every single waking moment, our lives should be dedicated to sharing that message. It's not just a pastor's responsibility. It's every child of God's responsibility to go out and share the message. Share a message and declare it just as Tychicus went and declared the message to the believers in Colossae. I also wrote down this. He was a beloved brother because he faithfully ministered. Look at verse number 7. It goes on to say how he declared unto you the conditions of the state of Paul. He is a beloved brother and a faithful minister. Now, I like this word minister and this term faithful. Faithful, it literally means somebody who is dependable, somebody that you can count on. But the word found in Colossians chapter 4 and verse number 7 concerning the word minister is a term that we use a lot today to describe individuals like myself. As somebody who's been ordained to the gospel ministry, to preach the gospel, to conduct funerals, to conduct weddings. But the word minister, it literally gives the idea of somebody who is like a deacon or a minister that we think of, or this word, a servant. Can you imagine if Tychicus would not have carried the letter of Colossians to the people of Colossae, we would not be able to read this book today. Every job in the ministry is valuable in the sight of God. 
We think that those who are greatly used of God are the ones standing before the congregation speaking the Word of God. Sure, they are used of God. No question about it. But also those behind the scenes taking care of things that, that others are not doing. And we find that Tychicus was a man, along with Onesimus, that, that did something very small. They took a letter that was written by divine inspiration of God, and they went to the city. They were used of God. He faithfully served. I wonder, what areas of ministry are you serving in today? How are you being used of God? Not just here at our church, but in our community. How is the light of the gospel shining through you? Are you faithfully ministering to our world? Or are you unfaithfully ministering to our world? But notice he goes on to say, not only a, 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 he declared a message and he, he was a faithful minister, but it also says a fellow servant in the Lord. Now, do not mistake the word minister and fellow servant. They are not the same words. They are different in meaning. The word minister kind of, it, it, it can mean three things. A minister, uh, like we were thinking of, or a deacon, or a servant. But the word fellow servant, it literally means a co-slave. That's what it means. So we find that, that, the, that the Apostle Paul is writing and he says that Tychicus is my fellow servant or my co-worker uh, and co-slave in the Lord. It's not saying that, that, that we are being made to do something and, and that God has a whip and he's uh, making us slaves to serve him. That's not what it's saying, but it's saying that, we are, that God has done so much for us that we are willing to lay down our lives to serve him however he deems necessary. It says, I wrote this, he was a beloved brother because he served his master. Now, my master, your master, is not a person like you and me. It is the God-man, Jesus Christ. So let us man our grounds. Let us take up our swords of the faith and get out and serve our master. The first attribute of Tychicus, if we could just go back and find his cemetery, how he was martyred, and, and we fi found it in Asia Maya, we would see on the tombstone Tychicus, a brother, a soldier, and a comforter of God. He was a beloved brother, my dear friends. But now I wrote down, secondly, from verse number 8, the first part of verse 8, I wrote down this. Tychicus was a sent soldier. Tychicus was a sent soldier. We've discussed how he carried the letter of the uh, of this book, Colossians, to the people in Colossae. But I want to share also with you a couple other passages. So I wrote down three thoughts. We're not going to uh, spend too long on the first thought, but he was sent. He was a sent soldier to the Colossians. Look at verse number eight. It says, "Whom I have sent." This word literally means that you get off. You're behind and you go. <laughs> you know what Jesus said? He said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. You know what the word go means in the Greek language? It means go. Yeah. It means get out there and get busy for the Lord, whom I have sent unto you for the same purpose, that he might know your state and comfort your hearts. He was a sent soldier to the Colossians. He went to Colossae. But I want you to, if you guys your Bibles there, I want you to turn to two other passages. Well, really three other passages. But I wrote down another thought. Not only was he a sent soldier to the Colossians, but he was a sent soldier to the Ephesians. If you got your Bibles, turn back to the left to the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 6, this great chapter dealing with the armor of God and how we wrestle not against principalities and powers and against flesh and blood, but against uh, the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. But in the last few verses of Ephesians, we find that the Apostle Paul mentions this man Tychicus again. In verse 21, it's almost like the Apostle Paul was writing the same exact words to Ephesians as he was to the Colossians. And he says in verse 21 of Ephesians 6, but that ye also may know my affairs, that is his state, that is his condition, and how I do. Tychicus, check it out now. A beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord shall make known to you all things. whom I have sent unto you for the same purpose that ye might know our affairs and that he might comfort your hearts. Peace be to the brethren, and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with all them that love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. Amen. And it says, written from Rome unto Ephesians by Tychicus. Perhaps Tychicus was the one who Paul was writing the divine inspiration, was speaking the divine inspired words of God, and Tychicus was helping him write them down, and the same could go for the book of Colossians. But he goes, and he goes, to Ephesus, another city in the Asia Minor, modern Turkey area, and there to do the same thing. 
And if he would not have went to Ephesus, guess what? We would not be able to read the book of Ephesians today. He was a sent soldier to Colossians and to the Ephesians. He went. But now also, take your Bibles and turn over to 2 Timothy. Go to the right. You have Colossians, 1 and 2 Thessalonians, then 1 and 2 Timothy. We find that Paul the Apostle is writing a, a book, two books, to young Timothy, one of his uh, disciples in the faith, and he mentored him. And he's writing these two books to help him in his ministry because Timothy was called to go to Ephesus and the pastor of that church. But in, in 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 12, we find these words that the Apostle Paul writes, and he mentions... Similar words that I've shared with you before. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 12 says, Antigonus, have I sent to Ephesus. Isn't that interesting? The greatest commentary on the Scriptures is the Scriptures. So please, when you're studying the Bible, it is good to use other helpful tools, but the greatest tool you could have in studying the Word of God is the Word of God itself. And here we find that, that Paul commanded, obviously, by the command of the Holy Spirit to go and to minister to the Ephesians and the Colossians. But now, keep your Bibles there and move to the right to Titus. In Titus chapter 3, we find another individual that was called of God to not, not to go to Ephesus like Timothy, but he was called to go to an island called Crete. And if you're thinking of the Mediterranean Sea, the Middle East, there's an island kind of um, in the middle of that sea called Crete. And this was the area that, Tim, that Titus went to. And the Bible says in Titus chapter 3 and verse 12, these words, Whom I shall send Artemis unto thee, or Tychicus. Be diligent to come unto me to Nicopolis, for I have determined there to win her. In this verse, we have two individuals that the Apostle Paul said, one of these two individuals is going to come to Crete and to bring this letter and to share some words with you. We believe that it is very possible that Titus went, uh, excuse me, that Tychicus went to Crete to deliver this epistle to Titus. And so I wrote down, he was a sent soldier to the Christians. Remember in this book of the Bible, Titus mentions how, uh, Paul mentions in Titus how the Christians were liars. They were habitual liars. They were evil beasts and they were slow bellies. These people were very, very wicked and they needed the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so God sent a soldier there. Today, this week, we honor soldiers who fought for our freedoms. And I'm thankful for every one of them. I never felt a calling of God to go into the military, but I have a higher calling, and I say this respectfully, a higher calling than the United States Army and military and Marines and National Guard and all the rest. The calling that has been placed upon my life and your life is far greater than those callings. It's called the Lord's Army. And today, my dear soldiers, my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, we are called of God to be sent soldiers into the world just like Tychicus was. And, and yes, I know that, that we read the, the Old Testament and the New Testament. We talk about how, oh man, these people are just vile and wicked and perverse, but we have the same stuff going on today because man is still contaminated by the same sin that was then. And today we are called to be soldiers. Not to take up our M16s and our bazookas and our tanks, but to take up the sword of the Word of God and to go out and fight the good fight of faith with compassion and courage. Tychicus, a brother, a soldier, but also a comforter of God. The first attribute was Tychicus was a beloved brother. Secondly, Tychicus was a sent soldier. But thirdly and finally today, as we look at verse number 8 of Titus, excuse me, of Colossians chapter 4, Tychicus was a called comforter. Tychicus was a called comforter. We've looked at the word brother. We've looked at the word sent. But now let's zoom in on the word comfort. Verse 8 says, Whom I sent unto you for the same purpose, that he might know your state and comfort. Say that word comfort with me. Comfort. Say it again, please. Comfort your hearts. Is what the Bible says. I believe every person here today is called of God to do something in this world for God. People ask me, for many years, people have asked me what I feel called to do. And I'm going to share with you right now the calling of God in my life is to do this. is to share God's word, the gospel of Jesus Christ, 
and it is to study His Word. I don't care about making a lot of money. I don't care about living in a big old nice fancy home. I don't care about any of that stuff. All I care about is those two things. is sharing the good news of Jesus Christ to the lost and to studying the Word of God. Because this book right here is the greatest book that's ever been written. Some people dedicate their lives to doing what I want to do. I'm not saying you need to do that. But just as God has placed a calling in my life to do that, God has placed a specific calling in your life. And if you run from the calling of God, then you might be like old brother Jonah in the Old Testament and find yourself in a big old fish or whale's belly. And it won't be fun, I'll tell you that. It'll stink to high heaven, that's for sure. What's your calling? Well, perhaps your calling is like this man in the Bible. I believe that we're all called to comfort each other. That is, this word comfort, it means three things. It means persistent encouragement. It means prayerful entreaties and powerful exhortations. When you study this word comfort, it can be, it can be rendered in a few different ways, but, but this word comfort, it literally goes beyond just saying nice words. I wrote down this. He was, a, he was called to comfort others with persistent encouragement. There's one thing that's missing in the body of Christ today, and that is persistent encouragement. We need to encourage each other. I'm tired of, of, of seeing believers all over the United States tear each other apart with words. I'm sick of it. I'm disgusted by it. Listen, I know somebody might not see every book of the Bible, every verse of the Bible the exact same way as you or I, but, but listen, if they believe that Jesus Christ died and rose again and that He is God in the flesh and that He saves sinners by faith, I am for them and they're my brother and sister. And as we come here, we need to understand that we need to be persistent about our encouragement towards each other here as a body of believers at Kluber Baptist Church. You know, it doesn't hurt to just send a text message of encouragement to somebody. It doesn't hurt to just send, and some of you all are very, very, very good at this, of sending uh, just a letter, a word of encouragement through the mail or, or, or a Facebook message or something. Or just asking somebody, hey, let's go grab a cup of coffee and just sit down and relax and talk. Listen, persistent encouragement is what we're called to do. But I also wrote down this. He was called to comfort others with prayerful entreaties. Entreaty is just a way of saying prayer. How we go to God in prayer. And yes, I believe that we need to, we need to encourage others with our words. But, but beyond that, we need to take it the next step and encourage others in our prayers. And actually pray for each other. You know, it's one thing to say that I'm going to pray for you, and it's another thing to actually pray for somebody. And I've been encouraged by several of you who've not only prayed for me, but have prayed alongside me. And I thank you for that. And I hope that as I have prayed for you in person and in private, I hope that you've been encouraged by those prayers. I know that prayer is one of the greatest things we could do for our fellow brothers and sisters. And, and here we find that, that, that as Tychicus went to Colossians, uh, to Colossae and to the uh, people at Ephesus, we find that, that he comforted them through not just encouragement words, but through his prayerful entreaties. But comfort here, it goes beyond just persistent encouragement and prayerful entreaties. It also means this. Powerful exhortations. He was called to comfort others with powerful exhortations. So he goes here, he comforts their hearts, and sometimes comforting hearts means that you need to stand up and you need, need to exhort the congregation of believers. Kind of like a sermon, a word of encouragement from the Word of God, not from my opinions, and not from not from Second Opinions chapter 3, verse number 4, you know what I'm saying? But from God's Word today. We need that encouragement, and that's what Tychicus did. Listen, every Christian is a brother, a soldier and a comforter for the glory of God. Not just this man in the Bible. And also women. Their sisters, soldiers, and comforters. We are all called to do these things. I share with you my calling, Paul's calling, three missionary journeys, ministered all over the Asia Minor and that area of the world. Tychicus was called to take a couple letters to a couple different cities. I know God is calling you. 
He's got your number on speed dial. And he's asking you to accept his calling. What's his calling in your life? Whatever it is. Would you say, God, I'll do whatever. I'll do it whenever. And I'll do it however. Throughout the Old Testament, we find that those words, it says, here am I, send me. I wonder today if you would pray that prayer to God. Father, we thank you.